There is a lie going around the Muslim community that is spreading like wildfire. Most of the people I know have fallen into this false narrative, and if we're not careful, it can ruin our lives here and jeopardize our hereafter as well. So what's this lie that's plaguing many Muslims today? The lie can be told through a simple story. When I began prioritizing my deen and trying to get closer to Allah, I would often get called by fellow Muslims as crazy or extremist. And this really threw me off. I was thinking to myself, I'm just following the Quran and Sunnah. This is what the Quran says. This is what the Hadith say. And I'm just following the teaching of our Prophet and so if you're calling me an extremist then you're also calling Prophet Muhammad وسلم, an extremist because that's who I'm following and these people always respond the same exact way they always say this and this is the lie times have changed what these people fail to understand is that yes times can change but revelation is timeless this Quran is timeless the teachings of our Prophet وسلم, are timeless until the end of time all this revelation can be used to make your life better and it's not supposed to be changed because modern times have changed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala already knew what the future holds he already knew everything is going to happen everything is going to change so when he reveals revelation he knows it's going to work for the rest of the time and because of this lie that we see many muslims believing our ummah is struggling and we are in the trenches right now everything evil that befalls us is 100 percent our fault what's going on in palestine right now is 100 percent our fault somewhere we messed up somewhere we made a huge mistake somewhere we stopped following the teachings of the prophet وسلم, and the teachings of the quran and that is what's causing all these calamities that are going on today in the quran chapter 4 verse 79 allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says whatever good befalls you is from allah and whatever evil befalls you is from yourselves. We have sent you, O Prophet, as a messenger to all people, and Allah is sufficient as a witness. Right there, whatever good befalls you is from Allah. Whatever evil befalls you is from yourselves. You did it to yourself. In another chapter, chapter 42, verse 30, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Whatever affliction befalls you is because of what your own hands have committed, and he pardons much. So everything evil that's happened to you, that's your fault. You caused it. Even if you didn't know. Because a lot of you guys are doing things that are haram that you just don't know is haram. And then when evil things happen to you, you wonder why. This is why it's so crucial to seek knowledge. Seeking knowledge is an obligation for every Muslim. A key point before I begin. Never take advice blindly. If someone tells you a piece of advice regarding religion or regarding anything, always ask for evidence, always ask for a source. Because I used to always fall for this. Someone would tell me, oh, the scholars are in agreement that this, this, and this is a correct ruling. Okay, which scholars? Where do they say that? And what sources are they using? Because the Prophet Sallallahu said, the halal is clear and the haram is clear. So everything is clear using the Quran and Sunnah, what is allowed and what isn't. First thing we need to talk about, and this might be the most important one regarding our ummah, is disobeying your rulers. Disobeying your rulers is not allowed. The Messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, said, whoever pulls his hand away from lawful obedience to the ruler, he will meet Allah on the day of resurrection without any argument in his favor. Whoever dies without any ties of allegiance, he will have died a death of ignorance. Now from the first part of the hadith, it says you cannot disobey your ruler. And I know some of you are asking, well, what if the ruler isn't good? What if the ruler is not Muslim? What if the ruler is bad for us? Well, there's another hadith I'm going to quote right now. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, Leaders after me will come who do not follow my guidance and my sunnah. Some of their men will have the hearts of devils in a human body. A man asked, O Messenger of Allah, what should I do if I live to see that time? The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, You should listen and obey the ruler, even if he strikes your back and takes your wealth. Even still, listen and obey. So look at that. Even if the ruler has the heart of a devil and he takes your wealth and he hits you and he abuses you, you still have to obey him. This is from the teachings of the Sunnah. A lot of you guys aren't going to like this, but I don't care. I have to tell you how it is. Now you can see this firsthand with Muslim countries today. Look at every country that has rebelled against the ruler and look at what happened to them. They're in poverty. They're in famine. It's way worse. Their lives are way worse now than it was before, before they rebelled against the ruler. And then you look at countries who didn't rebel against the rulers, who obeyed the rulers, who followed the Sunnah, and their countries are prospering right now. So anytime you deviate away from the Quran and Sunnah, evil is coming. All right, now the second thing, music. Music is haram, 100%. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, from among my followers, there will be some people who will consider illegal sexual intercourse, the wearing of silk, the drinking of alcoholic drinks, and the use of musical instruments as lawful. Musical instruments is one of the things that's considered haram. Now I know some of you guys are saying, oh, but music helps me. Music makes me feel good. You are being deceived by shaitan. Shaitan is not going to say, let's go destroy ourselves. Of course, you're going to say no. But when shaitan says, let's go enjoy ourselves, you go along with it. Cut out music and replace it with the Quran and see how your life changes completely for the better. It's not only cutting off music on your own, but it's also not going to events and places where music is blasting. Like for example, someone invited me to a wedding a couple months ago and I just had a feeling they're going to be playing music. And I just didn't go. For that one reason, I was like, I don't want to listen to music. You can call me an extremist. You can call me crazy, whatever. You can call me whatever you want. But I'm following the Quran and Sunnah. If the Prophet ﷺ said music instruments are haram, then they're haram. Point blank, period. And also, why we're on this topic when I brought up a wedding? Weddings are basically like one step away from being a club nowadays. I see weddings like online and 
it's music, it's free mixing, it's dancing, it's extravagance. You just need one more thing. You just need alcohol and boom, it's a club. So this is supposed to be an Islamic wedding, but it's basically a club, which is without the alcohol. One more hadith I want to use to solidify my point about music being haram is this. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu said, I saw the messenger of Allah, peace and blessings be upon him, place his fingers in his ears when he heard wind instruments and music playing. So anytime the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi heard an instrument or music playing, he covered his ears. That's what our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did. And here you are willingly listening to music, going to events that willingly have music, eating at restaurants that play loud music. And I remember when evil befalls you, there's no one to blame but yourself. All right, the next thing we need to talk about is money, specifically taking out loans. Interest, without any doubt, is 100% haram. That's in the Quran and in the Sunnah. In the Quran, chapter two, verse 275, Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala says, those who consume interest cannot stand on the day of judgment except as one stands who is being beaten by satan into insanity that is because they say trade is like interest but allah has permitted trade and forbidden interest so whoever has received an admonition from his lord and desist may have what is past and his affair rests with allah but whoever returns to dealing with interest those are the companions of the fire they will abide internally therein so interest is 100 percent haram no ifs ands or buts you cannot say oh but times have changed houses are expensive now Tough luck, go make some more money. I always notice that these Muslims who try to bend their religion and say that times have changed, they're always weak. Oh, but you know, times are changed, you know, houses are expensive. Okay, well, go make more money. You, you can do it, you can go make more money. You can save up for a house and rent in the meanwhile. Now a hadith regarding interest, the Prophet ﷺ said, Allah has cursed the one who consumes usury, its client, its witness, and its recorder. Usury and adultery do not become widespread among people, but that they will become vulnerable to the punishment of Allah Almighty. So everyone that takes part in interest is cursed by Allah. The one who records it, the one who witnesses it, the one who pays it, the one who receives it, everyone is cursed in that dealing. So you need to get as far away from it as you possibly can. Now while we're on this topic, we also need to talk about Islamic loans. What is an Islamic loan? You're making money by giving me money. That is haram, that is interest. You can't just take out the word interest from your Islamic loan and it's not all of a sudden halal. No, it's still a loan. I'm still paying you more than what you gave me. That is haram. And of course, when you bend the religion and you make it weak, not only do you make yourself weak, but you make the ummah weak. O believers, fear Allah and give up outstanding interest if you are true believers. If you do not, then be aware of a war with Allah and his messenger. But if you repent, you may retain your principle, neither inflicting nor suffering harm. You are waging a war against Allah and his messenger when you consume interest. This is the only sin where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that you're waging a war against him. Be mindful and be fearful of what you're doing. And I always see brothers using credit cards and I always respond with one or two reasons. They always say, oh, I'm building up my credit. And I respond with, well, what do you need credit for? And they always say, well, you know, one day I might, you know, have to buy a house and you know, I have to, I have to get a loan. I'm like what? You don't even get a loan, this is haram. And I always respond with, oh, but times have changed, bro. Like, you know, you have to buy a house. Says who? And who says you have to get a loan for a house? You can buy a house cash. And the other reason, whenever I ask brothers why they're using credit card, they always say, oh, it's uh, for the free points, for the free, for the free cash back reward. Like you're possibly waging a war against Allah and his messenger over a couple bucks, over a couple few points that you get back. All right, the next thing we need to talk about, your hair. A lot of you guys aren't gonna like this one either, but I have to say what has to be said. Your beard is supposed to be grown out, point blank, period. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, trim the mustache and let the beard grow. So when I see brothers who trim their beard like super short and I, I can't even grow a beard so whatever you guys can say whatever you want this is how Allah created me I can't grow nothing else besides what I got but anyway when I see brothers who can actually grow a full beard and I always trim it and line it up and make it all look all perfect and straight and to me personally I just find it feminine like your beard all lined up and perfectly groomed and of course brother respond it's not feminine to trim your beard okay well you're going against the prophet so I send them when you trim your beard Trim the mustache, yeah. Don't let the mustache come over your lips. But he said, let the beard grow. And there's no authentic hadith where the Prophet Sallallahu ever touched his beard. No trimming, no clipping, no nothing. He just let the beard grow. And this point is weird because you see all the shifts and all the imams and a lot of scholars who you can see like are trimming their beard and like shaping it up. And I always wonder like, wait, like what's going on? Like, is there a hadith I'm missing? Am I missing a hadith somewhere where you're allowed to touch your beard and you're allowed to trim it? And I remember after a while, I couldn't find the answer anywhere. And I had to ask my mom. I was like, mom, like why are these imams and these shifts like all like trimming their beard and like they have a kept up beard and it's short and they're obviously cutting it. And she told me the same thing that everyone else says. Times have changed. What do you mean times have changed? Back to the point I made earlier. It all comes from weakness. Whoever bends their religion a little bit or changes it a little bit, it's all from a state of weakness. You're afraid of what other people think of you. 
Yeah, you still, okay, so you're weak. All right, the next point. You're not supposed to be getting fades. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. He saw a boy who had part of his head shaved and the rest of it had hair. Prophet Sallallahu told the boy, either leave it all or shave it all. So those skin fades that you're getting are not permissible. And I know a lot of brothers do it for looks, to, to look good, to attract women. But at the end of the day, you only get married or you only attract a woman if Allah so wills. And if you attract the wrong women because you're going against the teachings of our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and that marriage ends up becoming a calamity for you, ends up being something terrible for you, that's on you. Just like Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala said, whatever evil befalls you is from your own hands you've done it allah doesn't wrong a soul in the least it's what you did you did it to yourself so keep that in mind moving forward next point we need to talk about is women i'll start it off with this as a man you should not be following any women on social media that's just the beginning standard i'm gonna have to start this off with why are you following a woman on instagram you a man are following a woman imagine how your future potential wife is going to perceive that you as a man you're supposed to be committed to her, but you're following other women on social media. Go and follow every single woman on social media. You shouldn't be following any woman out of respect for yourself and out of respect for your future wife. Imagine how embarrassing it is going to be for your future wife where you, you two are married, you two are committed to each other, but you're following other women. Following those points, of course, you should lower your gaze. I'm sure you all know that already. Always lower your gaze. Never give a second glance to something that you saw, which is unlawful for you. But then more importantly, never touch a woman who's unlawful to you, even if it's just a friendly handshake or a friendly high five. This is forbidden and this goes against the teachings of our Prophet ﷺ. The Prophet ﷺ said, For a nail of iron to be driven in the head of one of you would be better for him than to touch a woman who is not lawful for him. So a nail being driven into your head is better for you than touching a woman who's not lawful for you. And I know what some of you guys are saying. Oh, but you know, I work, you know, I have to shake hands with them and you know, I have to be a cordial with them and all that. And once again, it leads back to weakness. You can't just say, no, I can't shake your hand. I'm Muslim. You never know. She might become a Muslim because of that one act you just did. You might be like, oh, you, you don't want to shake my hand because you're Muslim? Like, what does that mean? What's that all about? And maybe you can explain it to her and boom, maybe she'll become Muslim because of you, because of that one act that you did. But no, a lot of you guys are weak. Oh, I just don't want to be rude to her. I don't want to hurt her feelings. What's more important? Maybe hurting her feelings a little bit or going against the teachings of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We need to start putting things in perspective. All right, the next point we need to talk about is backbiting. I'm sure everyone knows this is haram, but for those who don't, backbiting is just talking bad about people behind their backs. And like I said, most people know this, but also most people don't follow this. Abdullah ibn Masood reported, We were sitting with the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, when a man stood to leave. Then another man spoke badly about him after he left. The Prophet said, Pick your teeth. The man said, O Messenger of Allah, why should I pick my teeth when I have not eaten meat? The Prophet said, you have eaten the flesh of your brother. When you talk bad about your brother, you've basically taken a bite out of him. You've eaten his flesh. In another hadith, the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, passed by two graves. And he said, verily, they are both being punished, but not for a sin difficult to avoid. As for one, he is punished for the habit of soiling himself with urine. As for the other, he is punished for the habit of backbiting. Backbiting is very simple to stop. Just close your mouth. One thing I've noticed is that people backbite is because they feel uncomfortable. Like they're talking with someone and they just need to talk about something. They don't, they can't sit there in silence. So they'll just start backbiting people. Talk less. You don't always have to talk all the time. I right, look, to wrap this video up, I just recommend everyone to please follow the Quran and the Sunnah. Everything bad that's happening to you and everything bad that's happening to our Ummah is all our fault. It's because we are not following the Quran and Sunnah as we're supposed to follow it. The Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him, said, A time of patience will come to people in which adhering to one's religion is like grasping a hot coal. Inshallah, this video gave you a better perspective moving forward. Don't call anyone the Haram police. Don't call anyone an extremist. Don't call anyone crazy just because of following the Quran and Sunnah. You've been deceived by shaitan when you call people this. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to subscribe. All we talk about on this channel is self-improvement using the Quran and the Sunnah. And I'll see you on this video right here. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.